Hello and welcome to the Win911 How To Instructional Video Series. Today we'll be talking about making the connection between InTouch and Win911. A quick rundown of today's agenda. First we'll start off talking about where you can install Win911, followed by some specialized instructions for remote InTouch, and then we'll walk through the full configuration workflow of Win911. This includes all the tabs and everything required to configure the connection to Win911. To wrap things up, we'll talk a little, bit, a little bit about testing and some troubleshooting steps, followed by licensing and some documentation resources. Speaking of documentation resources, all links and documents mentioned in this video will be available in the comment section of the YouTube video. You might have to click on the show more to see all the links. Let's talk about where you can install Win911 with InTouch. The first application is a standalone InTouch with a single Win911 system. This diagram is basically saying that you can install Win911 either on the PC or the InTouch server. All of the following architectural diagrams are available on our website and available in the links down in the comment section. These are called our network diagrams. This specific instance requires one Win911 license. The second option is for a redundant InTouch application with a Win911 and a hot backup system. The hot backup is how Win911 is able to create redundancy. So in this application, you would still purchase a Win911 license and you would purchase a second license called a hot backup. When this system fails, you detect that writing a script and the script will kick off the backup system. The third option is for in touch with the RD server in a single Win911 license. So this still does require just one Win911 license on this RD server. And there are specialized instructions for connecting a remote InTouch system. This article is available down in the comment sections of the YouTube video. The last option is the two standalone InTouch applications. So in this scenario, we have two systems we'd like to funnel into one Win911. To do, to do this, you still purchase one Win911 license and you purchase an additional node license. So now both of these systems can funnel their alarms into a Win911. As mentioned a few slides back, there are specialized instructions for using a remote InTouch or using the RD server. Win911 utilizes both the Wonderware Alarm Toolkit for receiving the alarms and SweetLink for acknowledging the alarms back into the system. If you're installing InTouch remotely, or using the RD server, there's a specialized article you'll need to read about how to set up the configuration. Now let's do a quick walkthrough of the Win911 configuration process. Win911 is set up for a left to right configuration, so first we'll start over here on the contact tab. There are separate how-to instructional videos available on our website which walk through the contact not and notifications setup. So I'm just going to give a brief overview on how you do some of this configuration. So over in contact, this is the gateways. This is where you can figure out how to reach outside world, your email gateways, voice gateways, modems for SMS, or our new Win911 mobile app. Once the gateways are configured, you can then add your connections or your people into those systems. Over here in schedules, this is where you can assign different call out times to different people. So say for example, you have day shift or night shift, you can create a schedule similar to how you would in Google or Outlook type of calendar take that schedule and assign it to different people. If a person is assigned to a schedule, they'll only be notified during those specific hours. To continue the left to right configuration, let's jump over to the notification tab. Inside a notification, we have tactics and strategies. Again, there's a separate video that talks about tactics and strategies available down in the comment section of this video. Tactics are your call out process. So, now you have your notifier configured, your people in your system, their, their actual numbers or emails, Tactics, this actually is the call-out list. It comes in both forms, basic and advanced. Basic is available on any license of Win91, the standard, interactive, or advanced, and it is a straight down the list call-out. As you see here, calling out emails. The advanced tactics are only available on the advanced license. As you can see, these are more of a flow chart type of configuration where you can decide alarm comes in, let's notify a certain group of people, uh, Let's do a specific time delay, uh, or is it uh, a certain day of the week? Let's check for that. This is something you just sketch up on a whiteboard. Continuing on the left to right configuration, let's talk about the subscriptions tab. 
Subscriptions is one method to bring alarms into Win911. There's also imports available with InTouch. You only need to use one of the methods, either subscriptions or imports. Before we talk about how you bring your alarms into Win911, let's talk about what your alarm looks like in InTouch. So you have the tag name of the alarm. This is a group of the alarm. So by default, you have the dollar side system. You can create your own groups for your alarm. So you can make a safety group, a east packing line, or group them by area or so on. And you have the priorities of the alarm. The tags, groups, and priorities of the alarm, these are properties we are going to use to build a filter or a subscription inside of Win911. Let's move over to the software and take a look. Here we are inside of Win911, the alarming in touch and subscriptions tab. I already have a couple of subscriptions pre-configured. So let's just go ahead and click on one, take a look. Let's choose the engineers and techs subscription. So we can edit this. And here again, tag names, groups, and priorities I just showed you over in your InTouch alarm. So we're creating a subscription for these alarms. The tags, groups, and priorities are anded together, and individual items inside of here are ORed together. So in this specific subscription, we're looking for something that contains the word digital two or contains digital one. There are also drop downs for does not contain a wildcard or regular expression. If you use wildcard, you can use the asterisk for the wildcard. So now we're looking for anything that has wildcard something digital one, so anything before that. And a similar process applies for the groups and, and priorities. We can use a wildcard, contains, does not contain regular expression. Or in the priority range, we can search for a specific priority range or a very specific priority. Now let's talk about the alarming tab and building that application or connection over to Win911. Inside of the InTouch application manager, we're going to use this application name for our configuration of Win911. So right now I'm using Win911 demo as my application name. Over inside of Win911, I'm on the alarming InTouch applications tab. I already created my application, so let's take a look at what I have configured. Here's my name. Win91 demo. This application name needs to match what's over inside of your InTouch. The next piece is making your connection. I have InTouch on the same computer as my Win91, so I can just use local host. You can also use a static IP address, not a dynamic, but a static IP address, uh, and put that in there for your node name or the name of the computer where InTouch is installed. Alternatively, you can browse using this little ellipsis feature. The last piece is a specify sweet link node name. This going back to those remote InTouch applications or those RD applications, this is where you'd use this. So I'm going to skip over this for today. I'll provide a brief overview of watchdogs and heartbeats. Watchdogs are inbound to Win911. So say, for example, you have a PLC heartbeat you're, ma you're monitoring. You can configure this heartbeat to tick every so often. If you don't see that alarm come in, then you'll deploy a strategy. For heartbeats, these are outbound to Win911, so basically Win911 is letting your SCADA know that we're alive. To do this, we'll count up a 0 to 9, and you'll monitor that over in the SCADA. When something happens, you can decide what to do with that information. There's a full webinar, again, available in the comment section of this video that talks about making a heartbeat connection for InTouch. Now that we've created a subscription to catch those alarms, and we've built the application connection into Win911, Let's build a subscription route, which will point those alarms to those tactics and strategies and complete the callout list. This video does have the prerequisite that you understand tactics and strategies. Again, if you do not, I recommend going back to watching our video. So now here we are inside of Windows 1 talking about applications and the subscription routes. So we have a couple subscription routes created. Subscriptions, those are those filters that are catching those alarms using those tag names, groups, and priorities. Once those alarms are caught, we need to route those alarms. In this example here, the technician subscription, this will point to our basic maintenance strategy. So alarms come in the list, double check against each of these subscriptions. If it meets their criteria, it will point it off to that strategy. If it does not, then it'll go straight down the list to the next one. A tip during troubleshooting and configuration, you can add a, a final all alarms to point to some other strategy at the bottom here. This way, if you mistype something or you're just not getting your alarm, you can at least check to verify it doesn't 
It doesn't get skipped over by any of the other filters. So here I could do something like a all alarms do not notify. In a few minutes here, we'll be talking about Log Viewer, and I can show you how you can use this all alarms as a catch-all and what you can do with that for troubleshooting. Next, let's talk about tags. Now, tags are a more individual way to add your alarms into Win911. So say, for example, you did all your import or brought your alarms in, and you'd like to go back and add a couple alarms. You can click on here, and you can select which alarm type you have. Let's just do a quick discrete. And then you can add the actual tag name and, and give it a description. And where are you getting the alarm from? So it's very basic. You, you can go one by one and add specific alarms. As an alternative to subscriptions, there's also the tag import method. Again, you need to use only one method, your import or your subscriptions. Before completing an import of your tags into Win911, first you need to complete a DB dump. So from your application manager inside of InTouch, you do the DB dump and you create that file for us to bring your alarms over. Now, import versus subscriptions, Win911 does recommend using subscriptions because it's a dynamic method of bringing your alarms over. As I showed you those filters, those filters are designed to catch any alarms with that criteria. So if you have another alarm a year down the road that meets that same criteria, Win911 will already catch that alarm. There's no additional configuration. The import method is for those who, of you who are familiar with version 7 and used to importing alarms. So you can use import as well. Again, you only need to use one method, subscriptions or imports. That's what this little message is about. So I have my DB dump ready. I can click next. This is asking you where to get that file from that we just created. So I'll select this one, click the next. And here's all of our alarms in our system. You can click on one of your alarms or all of your alarms using this uh, all alarm button. I'm just going to do one alarm using this little individual item. You can also add labels to your alarms. Labels are additional tags you can add to your alarm for filtering, especially used in the advanced license of the software. So take this one alarm and then you can push it over as an import. So let's click next. Similar to subscriptions, now you need to take this alarm and you need to point it to a strategy. Your strategies are the policies for starting, stopping, re-notifying. Those strategies will point to your tactic, which is your call out list of people. So for this alarm, I would then point it to a strategy. So let's just say, I don't know, the basic maintenance. And then I can click next and then this will import your alarm into Win911. From there, the alarm will then show up in your tag list. Now that we've brought our alarms into Win911 and we built the connection between InTouch, let's do some testing. Now inside my InTouch demo, I have a screen configured to trigger some alarms if I click up to the high, high alarm. So this alarm goes active and is unacknowledged. Now I open up Win911 Log Viewer. So you can use the Windows search bar to find the Log Viewer, or you can find it from over here on the search bar. So in the folder Win911. Here's the log viewer. So inside a log viewer, I already have it open. This provides records of all your alarms coming in to InTouch. So here's that alarm that happened, the condition, the state, the source, and here's this basic maintenance strategy. So if we look over in our filter list, this alarm comes in, it hits this first technician alarm, it meets the subscription filter, and it starts off this basic maintenance strategy. That strategy will decide when to start, stop, and re-notify, and then that will continue on my call out list of people or my tactic. Now a troubleshooting tip, say for example, I mistyped something or created the wrong filter. It would filter through all of these subscriptions and then it would get down to this all alarms. Since I have this all alarm, it would then point to my do not notify. So if I'm troubleshooting and I'm not getting my alarms or it's going to the wrong person, I would add an all alarm filter here and point it to do not notify. Then over here in my log viewer, I would see strategy of do not notify, and that's an indication to me as an engineer that I need to go back and reconfigure my alarms because something is wrong with the filter. At this point, you should be receiving your alarm, but if you're not, one thing you could possibly check is your in-touch runtime. So right here I'm running. This is available in your services. Verify this is running. Once that's going, you should be getting your alarms. Now that you're receiving your alarms from Win911, let's talk about licensing. Licensing comes in standard, interactive, or advanced. We have the 30-day trial available for download on our website under products and software downloads. 
If you have not licensed the software, you'll see a red, mar red bar across the bottom saying you have so many days to license the software. Once you've purchased a license, there's an article on our website that will talk you through how you complete the licensing process. Licensing will use CodeMeter to validate a license. Again, this article is available in the comment section of this video. It's called Licensing Win 911 Standard Interactive Advanced. This article is available on our Win 911 knowledge base under product support. So here's this code meter I was talking about. So as you can see here, we have the demo license and an empty container. What we do is click on this empty container as it shows up here, and then we'll click on the activate license. As we do activate license, it'll ask if you'd like to create a license request. You'll select this button and then go next. This will create a special license request file, and then we're going to take this file, and then we're going to send it back to Win91 licensing team. During the licensing request process, you'll need all this information provided here. This, and then you'll take this file, which I recommend saving to a place that's easy to access, say, for example, your desktop. You'll take this file, and you'll fill out the licensing form. So here's the licensing form. Again, it's asking for, your, for all of your information about the SCADA, the end user, and so on. And down at the very bottom here, this is where you'll attach that Weeboo file we just created from CodeMeter. Once all this information is complete, click Submit, and this will go to our Win911 licensing team. You'll receive a file back from our Win911 licensing team, this Weeboo file. You'll drag it over onto this empty container, and then after doing that, it will show up as license down here. There's also this demo license, which is included with every Win911 download. That's what that's what starts off that 30-day timer once you download the software. So once this is fully licensed, we recommend deleting that demo file. So this one that says demo, you want to go ahead and delete that. And that completes the licensing process. To wrap things up here, let's talk about some documentation and resources which are helpful for getting started with Win911. Again, all links mentioned in this video are available in the comments section down below here. So first off is the InTouch in installation checklist. This provides an overview of everything you need to know about InTouch and Win911 for getting started. Those network diagrams I showed earlier in the video, those are also available. If you'd like to show them to your client and say, hey, here's where you need to install the system. That remote InTouch configuration article is also included. The heartbeats and webinars, we just briefly touched on what they are, but there's a full walkthrough video that'll tell you how to set up your heartbeat. There's also the quick start guide available on our knowledge base for InTouch, which walks you through these configuration steps I talked about today. And there's how-to videos, which talk about configuring your notifiers, tactics and strategies, and other parts of Win911. Finally, if you do require technical support, there's a link available in the comment section for how you can start a support case online. That's all, and thank you for watching the Win91 InTouch Connection Setup video.